After the video game crash of 1983, it would be Nintendo that would rise from the ashes and revitalise the video game industry in North America and large portions of Europe. After the initial success of titles such as Super Mario Bros. to get the console into the hands of eager families, it would be the excellent third party support that would ultimately secure the popularity of the NES beyond Christmas morning. Released in 1987 in North America, Castlevania is a title that hooked gamers upon its initial release. Without question, the title successfully planted its oak stake in popular culture and is now widely regarded as a classic by both modern and retro gamers. Sales of the original Castlevania NES and Famicom discs lay in the region of a million plus units, resulting in Konami's seminal action platformer punching weights for the likes of Donkey Kong, Mega Man 3, and Metal Gear. The franchise has swept across multiple platforms over the course of its life. The plot of the game spawned an anime to critical acclaim, and recently the characters were transformed into Nintendo Amiibo figures to be made playable in the Super Smash Bros. series. Castlevania also received multiple ports and updates, including a direct adaption to an arcade game using the same graphics, a reimagining called Haunted Castle for standalone arcade units, a conversion to the MSX2 home computer, and a remaster of sorts for the original Sony PlayStation in the form of Castlevania Chronicles. If you are within the retro gaming community, you are likely aware of Castlevania and its sequels due to the success of the YouTube series The Angry Video Game Nerd. It's no wonder that with 7.8 million views in part 1 alone, this game has received so much attention over the last 10 years. If you are interested in trying the game out post-review, I highly recommend searching for the Castlevania Anniversary Collection on the PlayStation, Xbox or Nintendo eShop, as the entire franchise is available untouched for around £15, which is an absolute steal. Today, an original Castlevania cartridge will cost you in the region of £40-£60 loose, and a box copy will run you anywhere between £175-£300. It's one of those games that's starting to slowly rack up in price as more and more people become aware of its history. Ah, that's not gone well! <laughs> to give the game its proper credit, we're going to be taking a look at the original North American release of Castlevania for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I feel it's a game absolutely worth revisiting, but be warned, this is by no means an easy game. Castlevania is broken down into seven distinct areas. The entryway, the stairwells, the battlements, the sewers, the dungeon, the bell tower, and finally the resting place of Dracula himself. Castlevania is brimming with personality. The unique layout of each stage alongside new enemy types, colour palettes and musical scores makes each area feel exciting to explore. I love finding all the little touches like the hanging skeletons, the castle shadow in the windows and the spinning gears in the clock tower section. It's really cool. I think Castlevania works so well because it blends crisp action platforming with familiar arcade gameplay. Castlevania isn't trying to emulate an established genre or reinvent it. Simon feels like other characters you've played with before, so the gameplay assimilates well into the title as your previous knowledge dictates how you might approach each section, which ultimately adds challenge and fun to the game. One element of the game I really like is the consistent difficulty and challenge. Even when you know exactly what you're doing, the game has no issue with changing a familiar enemy pattern, removing key items such as health and upgrades, and forcing you into errors. Sure it might be frustrating, but it makes the allure of beating the game so much more exciting as it remains a genuine challenge. Along the way, you find a variety of weapons that work best in different scenarios. For instance, the axe is excellent at bringing down enemies that move horizontally across the screen, and the cross, alongside the Roman numeral number 3, is absolutely essential for disrupting enemy patterns and swarming the stage with counter projectiles. One of the more frustrating aspects of the game is that when you lose a life, you lose all of your power-ups and hearts. You might be able to quickly power your wit back up, but if you need a specific item like the cross or the holy water to fight fire with fire, you're pretty much done for. I don't have any tricks for the last few stages though. On the final stage where you move through the clock tower, everything hits you so it's hard to even get through with a full life bar, so I say just run for it. You do feel quite accomplished when you make it to the stairs though. The music does a good job of building tension and you feel the very footsteps of countless players attempting the boss that awaits you. It's quite epic if you're familiar with the culture. Despite the game technically being around an hour long, the completion time is much more likely to be around 2-3 to three months if you're playing it on original Nintendo. You have to remember that you can't save, there are limited continues, and the developer really didn't want you finishing the game within a week and then returning it back to the shop. A game like this was a year long investment. As the castle crumbles, you get to see some choice credits for all your hard work. The names listed are spoofs of classic horror writers and actors, and it's largely assumed to be a joke by the developers, like Below Lugosi instead of Bella Lugosi, or Christopher B instead of Christopher Lee. What purpose does it serve? 
absolutely nothing. Interestingly enough, Castlevania's castle is actually based in a real place, Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany, and it exists at this address. So if you've ever wanted to pop in for a cup of tea or just want to fax Dracula, now you can. In the early 2000s, Castlevania was named as GT Countdown's eighth hardest game ever, placing it even higher than Konami's legendary Contra and Nintendo's own Zelda II The Adventure of Link, two games that are the interactive equivalent of Phil Mitchell after a few pints. The June 1987 edition of Computer Entertainer wrote, There is something quite special about Castlevania. It makes it very difficult to put away when you start playing, and that's the mark of a great game. And I have to say, I agree. I haven't played a game like Castlevania in such a long time that has genuinely challenged me and left me wanting more. One of the standout features of Castlevania is the music. The song Vampire Killer made its first appearance in this game and it's been a staple of the franchise ever since. The theme was even recently remade and performed at PAX East 2019 alongside the music from the Halo and Elder Scrolls series. Whilst contemporary reviews at the time gave the game a score around the 70% mark, largely for its difficulty level, and review scores a Metacritic today sit around the 75% mark, the game today firmly sits in the hallowed halls of fame of game journalism, with sources such as Games Informer placing it as their 48th best game ever. Ironically, many sources claim that Castlevania's only real issue is that its sequel, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, outshines it being cited as one of the best games ever made. But to me, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. It's like complaining that Billie Jean isn't Michael Jackson's best song because he also made Thriller. In issue 218 of Retro Gamer, Violet Berlin, host of the popular UK TV show Bad Influence, revealed that Castlevania was one of the key reasons she joined the program. Violet stated that the demonstration set Nintendo sent her, alongside the game, was the inspiration for her commitment to the role and that it inspired her friends to pick up a controller too, which is pretty cool. Despite what might appear as yet another side-scroller on the NES, and let's be honest, the NES's bread and butter is the humble side-scroller, Castlevania still leaves a lasting positive impression with a healthy balance of solid gameplay, tight control, challenging levels and excellent music. A must-play for anyone even remotely interested in 8-bit video games. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to stick around for future episodes. The goal of the channel is to review classic video games with a 50-50 approach of academia and consumer gameplay. I'd like to thank all of the lovely people on screen now for their input in the creation of this video, because without them, it really wouldn't have been possible. If you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see next, be sure to leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.